level seven. Thank you for tuning in to part two of this week's Agents of Fandom podcast. We crushed a live show on Twitch last night with special guest Jamie Jirak talking some Star Wars, talking some Obi-Wan. And now, of course, we are going to be breaking down the series premiere of Ms. Marvel. I'm joined, as always, by my wonderful, beautiful, charming co-host, Garrett. Garrett, how are you doing today? You know, I'm doing good. It's been, it feels like it's been a really good week. I feel like, personally, I've crushed it this week. And uh, I'm happy to talk about a really, really awesome show with a really awesome person, with two really awesome people, actually. One really awesome person and our very special guest, Mo from... I'm just kidding. I couldn't help myself. It was a setup. We have two, uh, three very nice people, of course, uh, here with uh, my man Mo from Streamer. How's it going, Mo? I'm I'm doing all right now. I mean, I don't know if I should be offended by that introduction, but I'm doing all right. How are you? Keep it this. Keep it. Think of it this way. I wouldn't have made that joke if it wasn't somebody I was uh, comfortable uh, making that joke with, and I didn't think was a good person. So, uh, yeah, it, take it. A, it was definitely definitely a compliment. Okay, whatever, whatever. I mean, I I said I wasn't going to be messy, so I'm not going to be messy. <laughs> oh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't set you up with a good start. I didn't set you up with a good start, but uh, I couldn't help myself. It was just like a night. It was Garrett lobbed it up, and I was like, "Ooh, this could be funny." But uh, I apologize. I I couldn't help myself on that one. We're going to be talking some Ms. Marvel today. This is a show I know you've been super. Uh, pumped up about mo uh you saw the first two episodes going into it as well what have you uh what have you thought of it so far kind of spoiler free spoiler free okay garrett what did you think of it (laughs) um no 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 i i i've obviously really enjoyed it well not obviously but i have enjoyed it um i i thought that the presentation of it was really nice it had a lot of good background details like the text conversation i thought that was all really sweet i thought it, I, I i didn't think it was because when when it had been pitched it seemed like it was going to be super childish as opposed to like what we actually got which is actually dealing with quite mature stories um and it's de- yeah it's dealing with quite mature stories dealing with quite um complex emotions and complex family dynamics as well um but also the presentation of it will introduce younger audiences to the MCU and to these complex stories in a really good way. Um, I also think it's great for representation. I don't know how much of episode one had it, but I know, and you know as well, TJ, that episode two has got a lot more by way of the things that um, that it wants to put out there as far as her culture and her history and her religion. So it's all, it's, it's, it's going in a positive direction. Yes. I feel you there. And yeah, we are very excited to deep dive into this show. I I don't want to bury the lead, but I got to be honest. I think this might have been my favorite series premiere of a show uh, we've gotten on Disney Plus yet. But before we get Mm. into that, we got some Marvel news to talk about. D23 was announced uh, today. They we had a they Disney gave us a nice little announcement of when it's going to be. It's coming in September. And our friends at One Take News, BSL, reported that uh, they're going to be out uh, at San Diego Comic-Con this year. They're going to be doing all their stuff in D23. Sounds like they're going to have a big Disney panel, a big Marvel panel, a big Lucasfilm panel, and some really big announcements coming for us. Garrett, as a guy who's in Cali, I know you may have some uh, ill feelings about uh, no Marvel in uh, San Diego Comic-Con. But uh, at the same time, you got to be excited for some releases and some news we could potentially be getting from D23. Yeah, I mean, of course, I'm never going to not be happy about um, info releasing. But yeah, I actually am not that far from San Diego and had it on my mind that I might, you know, go to my first Comic-Con this year. But that is definitely not going to be the case if this is true, which, you know. No, no shade to anyone else, but obviously that would be a big reason for why I'd be there. Um, as far as what we could hear, like, are we going to get a Werewolf by Night announcement finally? Is it going to be like that? One month before? <laughs> yeah, is it going to be that close to rumored release of the project? I don't know, but hey. 
I, I just can't. I, so uh, uh, another little fact, I didn't hear about this today. I've been working diligently. I'm such a hard worker. I wasn't paying attention to any of this. And uh, TJ dropped this bomb on me like right before uh, recording. And I was like, damn, you should have done this. You should have dropped this on me live because I feel like my my reaction was a little bit toned down from what you guys saw. I was I was a little devastated. Yeah. <laughs> And so, like, yeah, I think the werewolf by night thing is interesting and, like, not to get to theory mode off the bat, but we know Blade is going to be starting production a bit before this, uh, this coming this summer. And with werewolf by night, not us not knowing anything yet, it's being a, it being a Halloween special, Blade starting production, it could be announced that maybe that could be our, our first appearance and maybe they start that marketing with him at the uh, forefront. That could be something... So that's interesting, but uh, you never know. We What we also got from D23, though, is some more rumors and news about Thor Love and Thunder. And I guess not rumors because they were interviews specifically for this. Um, and I know we got some people in chats who are kind of trying to go in blind and avoid it. So those are there for you to look at if you want them. But uh, we're not going to dive too deep into them on, str on stream. We did get another uh, TV spot teaser, though. Uh, tickets are going on sale for Thor Love and Thunder on Monday. We got another look at Gore the God Butcher. And probably the most iconic moment from a Thor trailer yet when we... We talked about this a bit with Jamie yesterday with the Tessa Thompson Valkyrie given that sort of little lick there. It was tough to focus on anything else after that. Mo, what did you think of the new uh, teaser we got for uh, for Thor? I didn't watch it. You're one, are you one of these I, people that's trying to like go in, go in blind for the movie for no. full enjoyment? No, no, no. God, no. Absolutely not. Um, I've just been so, so busy that anytime I see like a screenshot of or or like a TV spot or something. I'm I'm often just at work and I'm just like, okay, I'll get to it later. My bookmarks folder on Twitter is like full of TV spots. <laughs> I've definitely done that before, a hundred percent. Yeah, that's uh, uh, yeah, that's no. very reasonable there actually as well. And you know that's fine because uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty common theme uh, among our community is that it's we like to stay week free. And so that's not something we started Ooh. off doing, but as we as we engage uh, with more pe people in our Twitch chat, more people in our Twitter community, that's a pretty common theme of people that uh, listen to the pod. So we've really kind of stopped from focusing on the leaks and focusing more on the official news we get, as well as uh, I mean, I guess this one is official news. But when you come when you come this close to the to the movie, you can you you can uh, you can avoid it still. So. We're, uh, we're going to move on past that. We did get some casting news. Uh, Maria Bakalava, from, uh, who ha recently had her debut in the Borat sequel, Borat, Bo uh, Borat sequel, um, and just absolutely was the highlight of the movie. Garrett, grow up, man. We're supposed to be professionals here. We're, we're I'm not going to ever not hear that movie as Borat again. <laughs> like, <laughs> that just <laughs> ruined everything for me. Good. I'm in the, in the best rat. way it, like it did you know that's the best kind of ruin but uh <laughs> oh rat yeah she was indeed the star the, the standout star of bo rat too um please go <laughs> and she's gonna be a yeah. key role in guardians of the galaxy 3 um whatever that means seems to be a lot of key roles popping up in that movie um i'm curious if any of you have any hopes of who you'd like to see her be any theories um, but, but if not, we can kind of kind of go to the uh, go on to the next uh, part. But I'm excited to see her in the uh, MCU because I think she's a phenomenal actor. I'm curious to see to hear what the uh, chat has to say, if they have any theories, like specifically like Damon. I'm wondering what Damon thinks. Damon, hit us. Hit us with your uh, top top Bo Rat Guardians of the Galaxy crossover theory. Um, and then, uh, in the meantime, we also got some news on the I am Groot series. It's going to be debuting a week before she Hulk in August. And, um, on Twitter, somebody asked James Gunn, is this going to be canon to the MCU? And he said, oh, I don't really know. I, I don't think so. And it definitely seemed like it could have been a tease. Like I'm not telling you anything as opposed to a, no, this is a, a hard, not Canon, but it's definitely interesting that we really don't know what this is going to be with the I am Groot series, whether it's going to be our specific Groot. Um, our, our last night uh, guest that we had talking Obi-Wan, Jamie Jirak had a fun theory on fate on phase zero, that maybe it could be 
um, the group that we saw in the first Guardians of the Galaxy, him as a baby. Um, and I think that that actually would be kind of something interesting. Mo, you, you seem to have uh, a thought on this. I have a thought on it, and it's because he said they're special shorts, not canon to the Guardian saga, not to the MCU. He didn't mm-hmm. say specifically MCU. It's going to be canon to the MCU, but it's all, you saw the poster. It's all him grew, being like a little baby. Just doing doing his little baby things, but like it's not it's not canon to the Guardian saga because I think he means like it's not set in the Guardian saga. Yeah, like as in from Guardians one through Guardians three, unlike the holiday special, which is set in between Guardians two and three or whatever. That seems so like a little bit not- of a deliberate like a, a deliberate, deliberate misdirect. Yeah, because yeah, like you like he he, <laughs> he said he 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 said it on Instagram and he said. um Oh, everything's canon yeah. in the multiverse. No, no, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. No, it's not. I disagree. Yes, it, it is. is. <laughs> um, I think yeah, the short the shorts are just gonna be the sh- it, they're just gonna be Groot being Groot doing Groot things. It's not gonna be like things. yeah, just like I oh, oh, I almost swore I didn't swear, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's just gonna be it's just gonna be a thing. It's not gonna be. It's not going to be not canon, um, but it's also not going to be like, you're not going to see any of the Guardians pop up. It's just going to be Groot doing Groot things, living on planet Groot or whatever. So here's the thing. If it's not canon and we don't get a baby Groot versus baby Yoda fight, we all collectively unanimously riot, right? Is that, yes. a, is that can, that, can that be agreed upon? That's, yeah, I feel like that should at least definitely be close to a consensus yeah if you don't want to see baby Groot and baby yoda fight at this point like why would or, they or like hug people? why because they have beef bro because like they're like i'm the cuter baby thing oh they're out here doing baby things yeah. and they want their baby crown yeah i gotta send you some S- the snl skits skits of uh kyle mooney as like cool baby yoda it's hilarious the only baby yoda video that i saw was the one where uh, I'll I'll share I'll share it with you later, but it it winds up with with with, with him dying. Um, but that's not a video I want any <laughs> part in. Yeah, on a much. Okay, well, I mean, but but did, who cares, TJ? A, you yeah, you did make a seat. Yeah, you're gonna show picture. us stuff anyways. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you this. <clears throat> anyways, we'll, if you had to see we'll it, I have to see it. That's that's the rule of the internet. That's that's fair enough. Um, on yeah, a lighter note. 25. We did have, uh, we did have, uh, you guys trying to, trying to keep things on a good, good note. You're making fun of my pronunciation of the infamous Bo movie, Bo Rat. Um, and Bo now, Rat. and now this, this is just, this is just the worst on a lighter note though. I think it's time, to talk some today, Ms. Marvel. it's time to talk some Ms. Marvel, the best <laughs> premiere episode that we have seen on Disney Plus to date, Garrett, what do you think of that statement? I know Mo has uh, is isn't isn't fond of it, but Mo and I don't have the same taste in TV, so that that's okay. I wanted I want to hear your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, because surprisingly, we haven't really talked about this. Um, I loved it, <laughs> and I'm I'm uh, I think I'm going to agree with you that I think it was my favorite first uh, debut pilot episode of an MCU series. I almost cried like i i loved it so much i had such a genuinely um good time watching it we'll get into all the specifics later but i think i'm gonna agree with you and i really loved the moon knight first episode like so i don't know tell us why the moon knight one was better mo well i didn't say the moon knight one was better did i no but i I I thought that was your number one well moon knight is my is still my favorite show Without a doubt, it's still my favorite show. Moon Knight, I thought, made me feel the same way about these MCU shows that uh, as One Division did. Like, just I'm so into this whole mystery aspect of things, trying to figure out like what the hell is going on, what are we, what, what am I watching, what am I being presented with, and with Miss Marvel, I didn't. It, it was a very good episode, but for me, for my personal tastes, I prefer more of a mystery 
bend to it. Like, there's no mystery that's set up yet in Miss Marvel. However, episode two of Miss Marvel does be episode one in terms of which one I prefer for some reason related to a mystery aspect. And I think, I think that's definitely a, a reasonable take on it as well. And what I love so much about this episode is they showed there was so much speculation and unfounded criticism that just because of her power set change, uh, this was going to be a big change to comic book Kamala Khan and her origin and all of this. And what I loved about this is they took so many aspects, direct shots, almost direct lines from the comics that are so true and important to the character of Kamala Khan. And they mm -hmm. gave it to us in this episode. And it was a beautiful storytelling bit at the beginning. They gave us that little up to date. Another question that I've, I've heard on so many different podcasts are like, how do people know what happened? Like in the battle yeah. with Thanos, how do people know about it? Like that doesn't really add up. That doesn't make any sense to me. And it's, we got our answer. It's Scott Lang's podcast. And if that podcast did exist in real life, I think that would be the best thing ever. Um, but I think it's cool that we got that little note that that's how um, people found out about that. And I thought that was a great yeah. little intro to it. Mo, what did you think about the intro and kind of how they brought animation into a live action show like this? Oh, okay. So I don't know if you guys were, were knew me when I was in my... Uh, Looney Tunes back in action to reboot petition phase but that was a big uh, I love blending live action and animation that's why I love Rescue Rangers so much I love it when it's done well um, I thought the animation so Aunt I'm Man. gonna I'm gonna sh yes true correct <laughs> oh rat, oh, rat. Um, but I, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show off a little bit here but um, when I watched it, I was watching it on a massive screen um, when I watched it for the first time because I went for the premiere event in London. Um, mm -hmm. And so I was watching it and I was like, oh, my God, this is the best thing I've ever seen on the cinema screen. <laughs> um, because it was just like it just felt so special. And it felt like like I just wasn't sure what to expect. I was like, OK, so my biggest concern was that those you know, those flourishes from the trailer, like the split screen, the text bubbles and all of that, and the speech bubble, sorry, all like, I thought they were just flourishes from the trailer. I didn't think they were going to be integrated within the show, but I thought the trailer did a really good job of marketing that aspect of the show and the way it's presented. And I think entering in with animation like that is just such a clever way of like really setting the tone for what you're about to watch. Um, and I also want to ask you guys, who would you prefer doing your, your MCU recap? Would you prefer it be Luis or would you prefer it be um, Kamala Khan? So go first? I, I would rather Kamala do mine because of her ability to just like pump up who she's talking about and make them sound great. However, mm. I would rather watch Luis do a recap because Luis is my like favorite underrated character in the MCU on the Agents of Fandom TikTok channel. Uh, we did it kind of, that's how we did our intros to uh, all of our different staff members. And one of the TikTok sounds is like um, an underrated character. And Luis was mine just because he is, he is just a absolute treat. And I love him. What about you, Garrett? How much time do I have? I, got time. I, got time. I, have, I am busy in two and a half hours Garrett I'm taking Kamala but if I need like I need like my recap on the go Luis every time like that dude is giving you facts and he's and he's spitting them like you're at an auction <laughs> exactly I'm, I I love that guy I'm good I'm just going Kamala I want her to do everything in animation and the sloth baby production needs way more subscribers on YouTube um True. but so yeah. does agents of fandom um, by the way yeah so are you on YouTube? Of fandom so if you're watching this on youtube hit the like button make sure you subscribe as well and uh yeah the sloth baby productions need more and i love that that was another direct pull from the comics uh and even in comics kamala's got her little sloth babies with wings all over her room and i love that they brought a immediate continuation for that in shout out to her best best mates in uh in high school there you got nakia you got bruno commenting on there acting as though uh they have no idea who she is i thought that was fantastic <laughs> 
what do you think? And so um, we're not going to talk too much about Nakia yet because she, uh, we're, we see a lot more of her in episode two. Um, but in episode mm. one, we really get to meet Bruno. What do you think of uh, uh, Bruno as a character? Uh, Garrett, I want I want to get you first. I think I thought he was a, a charming dude. Like he he said all the right things to like pick her up. I was like, damn. Sometimes I wish like I thought such poignant things like on the spot to like give people advice and um, his relationship with her parents and and her whole family. I thought was just really sweet. Um, and then you texted me something about him. And then that was in my mind the entire time I was watching it. And it marked it up a little bit for me. Oh, what did you, you text Mo. him? Tec- what did you text him? I, I text want your thoughts. Send it to me. Sure. Okay, he'll, so, he'll, he'll touch on it. Yeah. Okay. So I, I am suspicious of him because I think he's going to get wind up getting really jealous of the fact that she's got powers and he doesn't. Um, I, th- I feel like they're setting him up because obviously she gets the Captain Marvel powers. He's got the, he dressed as, she dressed as Captain Marvel. He dressed as Bruce Banner, who's like a scientist and whatever. I feel like he might try and make himself powers and wind up like injuring himself and she has to go and save him um, or something like that. But I'm also very, I, I feel like he, I'm hoping that he doesn't go straight into like incel neckbeard type territory and just like go on, on 4chan and being like, who's this? <laughs> slur <laughs> so that like that that's like a, a worry i'm scared of specifically from we did a interview with a amazing amazing young star named josiah young who was the lead in raising dion and his mentor in that show you just nailed it to a t that that that's essentially what he is you he, you introduce him as this adorable wonderful lovable character and then it just gets the absolute twist turn when uh, the jealousy kicks in and i, I like that guy too bruno. i know i hope that's not the case for bruno can't i, really I just hope- have nice things please <laughs> so my my theory my theory that i have is well this is not related to episode two at all i promise um but it's just a theory that I've got, and I tweeted out it. I tweeted it out, but it's basically that you know they he showed her the little um, company lo- company logo that he, on on the gloves, which she obviously mm-hmm. left at the convention center. Yeah. So when when the nice agents are going to be sweeping through the convention center and doing cleanup and investigation, they're going to find those gloves and they're going to go to B Corelli Corporation, right? Mm-hmm. And remember how he said he's never going to tell anyone, but then he might have to wind up telling. Um, mm. And then I think that'll, uh, wow. because if they're going to go and stalk him, but I also think that's going to tie in a little bit to what I said about him trying to make his own powers um, and then her having to save him. Maybe they've like fallen out or something at that point when he has to give her up. Um, and then she has to go and swoop and save him. That's my, Very that's my theory. I, I like it. it. I, I like it. it. I hate it. I mean, in terms of logic and dot connecting, I love it. No, it's beautiful. Um, it's beautiful. Yeah. I just don't want it to happen because I just want it to be nice, man. He's nice. Because yeah. rewatching, like I rewatched, uh, I've, I've now seen the first episode four times. I watched it the third time last <laughs> night with Ava when she watched it. I watched it again this morning preparing for this pod. And it did click into me that, uh, last uh, night and it didn't really before that was like, they put a lot of emphasis on those gloves and then it's just never mm. heard from again. So I definitely think that's a really good point that that's something that they're going to come back to in the future. The theory I texted Garrett to, to be honest, I'm pulling myself back. I'm pulling it. I'm, I'm pulling it back. Cause I don't, I don't buy it. Um, and the reason why I have this theory is because constantly until we get to secret invasion, I'm going to have a little scroll alarm going off in my head of people I think oh. could be there. And so and he just might get called out on him. Twitter for it. <laughs> First thing I thought, I I, I I thought that could be him. And uh, I'm pulling it back. I don't think he is there. But something we are going to do after right. we break down this episode is I'm going to throw some names at you. And we are going to uh, play a little game of scroll or not scroll. And uh, you, mm, you guys it's, are going to tell it's, me. It's, not get there yet. Sorry, wait, till the game. wait till the games. We're gonna, we're gonna, no, wait no, till no, the game. but it's very, it's very obvious. It's very obvious who the scroll is in this. I'm sorry. Well, you we'll not, see. Did you, we'll see if we're all did on you the not same page. Ah, bah, 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 no, no. Ah. I don't no, want to no, ruin no, the game. I know what you're going to say. Don't say anything about the scene you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. I just want to save it for the game. No. 
I'm not saying it. I was going to okay. say something else as well. Sorry. But also, I was going to say something and now I've lost it. But we'll find, I'll, I'll find it back. I'll I apologize back. for yelling at you. I was excited about my game. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, a lot of ideas go to the podcast graveyard because they just get, you just get cut off. It <laughs> happens in podcasts. It's just, it's just a thing. We do it. We, everyone does it to each other. I know. There's something in an MC. TJ's thin ice. Full rat. (laughs) TJ's on thin ice. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And so (laughs) the next thing I kind of want to get into is the family dynamic. And Mo, you talked about representation in this uh, this show. And we definitely are going to see more of it in episode two. But I wrote a glowing review for this on uh, agentsoffandom.com. And I didn't want to harp too much on that aspect other than the fact that I love that the writers and the creators behind this um, they're representing the representation flows on screen and off screen. Um, And that's what I really like about this, but obviously my perspective as a white guy here in Canada, I don't have that same perspective seeing Kamala on screen. And I was wondering if you wouldn't mind touching on that a little bit. Uh, Yeah. So um, there was, when I when I tweeted out my reaction to Miss Marvel, I said that I cried, and a lot of the crying that I did was in the first episode, because there was a scene between her and her brother um, where he said that he was going to ask, he's going to talk to the parents about it, and to me that kind of spoke a little bit more about an aspect of representation that people don't see is because when you're the younger sibling, because I'm the younger sibling and my parents are immigrants to the UK. Um, and I was born in South Africa and my parents were, my whole family moved over. But when you're the younger sibling, what you find is often your older sibling acts as the bridge between you and your parents, because your parents have got their culture that they've grown up with in your home country. And you've got your culture that you've grown up with in this new country and your, and your sibling, your older sibling has a little bit of both or has like the greatest split of both. So they act as like a bridge and that, that conversation reminded me of of me and my sister um things are like things that i would do with my sister and yeah and i'm gonna start crying again and i don't want to cry but um it was a very very good conversation to to have uh, a good scene to put in there um and i think it's very it's very telling that this that the show is written by people who have been through these things and have experienced these things and have had these conversations or have been that they've been the older sibling or the younger sibling because there's and and I also like the effect of that conversation is what the parents deem as a compromise, which is obviously not a compromise at all. It's like you're gonna get like we, you're gonna get ninety five percent of what we want and five percent of what you want, which is not the compromise that you would expect or would would want to get. Um, and you can even tell about like the, one of the other things that like when when I grew up in like when I was growing up, it was never a thing to say like oh I hate you to my parents because that was just like nothing that you ever said like yeah. as as a brown kid you, you never say oh i hate you but you'd see like our white friends oh i'd see my white friends being like oh i hate you to their mom who would like i don't know wouldn't let them stay out for like another five minutes or whatever and but you saw how heartbroken kamala was when she said um that's humiliating and it's just like that effect of it is like like, like it's just those, like those moments and like that regret that you feel like when your parents are like i'm very very hurt like I've given up everything for you to come here. Um, and you're just saying that what I'm doing isn't good enough for you. Um, which I thought was a really good way of showing a really complex. What the, sorry about that. I don't know if you've just seen that. Um, if you've heard, just, heard, just heard that. But yeah, it's a really complex um, emotional situation that I, if I talk about more, I'm going to start crying. Well, but, thank you very much for sharing that because yeah, that was it's an incredible perspective our chat right now is echoing it and thanking you for sharing it and we have our guy uh one of my one of my good friends uh now i like to say uh even though it's their internet friends that i've only met over zoom but one of my good friends af he's going to be joining us he's a fan of the pod he's going to be joining us after um ms marvel episode four and uh he's he lives in south africa and he's echoing a lot of the things you're saying in the chats and uh um I'm really excited to get him to hear uh, on to hear his perspective as well, and to hear your pers- uh, and thank you for sharing yours because that was that was absolutely fantastic, and I think that's so amazing that this show is being brought to the forefront uh, to um, to Marvel because 
there's aspects of representation that are so important that it's doing. And Ms. Marvel is just such a impeccably wonderful and fun and relatable character that we, we talked about this a bit with uh, Damon during our Ms. Marvel primer of how, even though uh, Garrett and I were not the biggest fans of the uh, Avengers game that came out on uh, um, by uh, Square Enix, we do the highlight for both of us was the Ms. Marvel origin in it when she's in Avenger con. And I love that that got pulled uh, from the game and we get to see that here. And while Peter Parker and Kamala Khan are incredibly different in so many ways, as my favorite character, Spider-Man, I see so much of that resemblance in Kamala and just in terms of being a teen who's relatable and quippy and smart and you just really want to root for them. And uh, it's it's really brought a lot of enjoyment uh, with the show so far to me. Um, Garrett, I was excited for you to finally see this episode and AvengerCon uh, and get that little nod to the game. It was very fun. That was a really fun uh, just scene. And I, my, you know, my girlfriend has an immigrant family as well. And while not everything is exactly the same, you know, she was able to to echo some of those sentiments as well. And so I, um, while I am a, a white man from, you know, the United States, I'm very lucky to be able to have some of that perspective. And um, thank you, Mo, again, for sharing that with us. Cause that almost made me cry like, like the episode last night. So, um, you know, I, I think it's important that you are able to say these feelings. Um, and I, and I hope that, I know everybody in the chat right now is is loving it, and I and I hope that everybody who is listening to this at a later point, you know, can can understand how important it is that projects like this are pushed to the forefront. Um, you know, it sucks that it's it's taken till now to get here, um, but I'm so you know incredibly happy and like proud to be alive and and in this time period and to be someone who can champion for this kind of stuff. Um, and it's only going to get better moving forward. And I, and I can't wait to hear more stories like this throughout the weeks um, of the episodes releasing. And I think that this is just a really, like, this is a really awesome moment. Something that else that I find so awesome about the show is like we know Marvel done a good job of finding actors who really embody the characters. And Mo, you had a bit of a unique perspective on this because we've seen all the interviews, but you were at the, uh, you saw it, Aman Vellani, in uh, when you went to the premiere in uh, in the UK. Mm-hmm. How much of that translated in in person as well? Like, is she as sweet and radiant and charming in person as uh, she is on camera? I mean, um, you can see for yourself. I took a video of her. Um, that I don't know if I've shared it, but I can I can share it with you. She she is she's as lovable as she as she seems like. Obviously, we've only seen her in interviews and whatever. But when when I saw her like walking onto the carpet and stuff like that, because basically they made all press like they were like all press go that way because talent's coming. <laughs> so I was like, right, okay, that's my cue to. <laughs> but um, so I just went downstairs and got and got drunk and I was like, right, okay, cool, this is fine. Um, but you saw her coming in and she she looked nervous. She was trying to do her best, like smiling and 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 be. But you could still tell it was all very new to her um but when she was on stage giving the introduction because she i believe watched it in the same screen that i that, that i was in um so you saw her like she was sitting i think way at the back and so was rish shah who was um who plays a character that you meet in episode two um they were both at the screening and she is every bit as in love with this character as her character is in love with Marvel itself as like all the all the heroes and everything like that it's so exciting to see someone who cares this much about everything like that that cares this much I don't want her to get burned out I don't want her to get overused I don't want it to get to become um a Robert Downey Jr where he just feels done with it after whatever I, I want her to feel like she's in control and she's the future of the MCU um, I want them to use her sparingly, and I want them to use I want them to use her well because she deserves to be treated with like everything. Um, 
What she is so crazy the to world, me though. and we must protect Amon Vellani at all costs. And I love so much too how like she is all of us. She's out here texting Kevin Feige saying, "What do you mean we're Earth six one six? We're not Earth six one six. That doesn't make sense." Like she's the fan of fans, and yeah. I I think that's a great point that it's important that they treat her well and with respect and give her the space so that she doesn't get burnt out. And I think that's a great point that a lot of us wouldn't, uh, wouldn't really consider. And and I think, did you watch the, were you at the global press conference? No. Okay. So, I, oh, you were away, weren't you? You were. Out, yeah. I was uh, wagging my finger. I was <laughs> but, bachelor party gallivanting at the lake. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, and I think, I think it's it's really uh, it's really quite telling, like just how much of her character, like how much of her life bleeds into her character as well. Because she said that she got the casting call from a, a WhatsApp photo from her auntie, and I'm just I, like, that is so that is such an Indian thing to have happened. Like I say, Indian, I mean South Asian thing to have happened. Um, just like getting a, a random WhatsApp DM, and you never ever trust anything that comes in a in a whatsapp image from any extended family members ever because it's either going to be like here's the cure for covid or um this is why you can't drink pepsi products anymore <laughs> so it's like, like you just never ever um, you won't want to drink it's, pepsi it's, it's products probably... after you see this <laughs> <laughs> exactly and and one of my i think one of my sister's friends had like made a fake one um like to, to a fake forward that they'd forwarded on to people like to try and catch people out. Um, and then it had found their way back to them or something like that. Um, oh, no. Which I just, uh, as like a, as, as a forward, as like a, a conspiracy forward. So you never, basically the story of this is you don't trust things that your aunties send to you on WhatsApp at the best of times. And definitely not at the time when it's like a Marvel casting call for this, like brown character because typically like the the whatsapp messages have got one of like two bends it's either don't trust the government or the government is out to get or like hollywood is specifically targeting brown people so you you wouldn't trust trust things like that but well thank I'm god for that whatsapp out. text right because it all worked out yeah. so well and like you know, it's so hard not to root for this, not only this character, but this person who is literally the embodiment of all, all of us and this character. And she is like living, like who wouldn't want to become like their favorite character and like then portray that for, for you know, years to come. Um, so it's oh, yeah. just so hard not to root for her. And uh, I think there's a lot of amazing, amazing things um, coming up within, within the next decade. I agree completely. And the next thing I want to talk about specific to Kamala Khan and Ms. Marvel is her power set change. She's no longer an inhuman. Um, it's no longer the embiggening and uh, shape-shifting stretchiness uh, that she had before. And I'm going to be honest, I think it's an improvement. I like it better. I think the CGI is absolutely phenomenal and looks super cool. Um, I was blown away by how much better it looked on my HDTV than it did on my computer screen uh, when I was watching it beforehand. Um, and I think it mm. looks pretty damn awesome. I like that they emphasize the Pakistani flourish to her Ms. Marvel costume. And that's how she came to the Bengal. And I thought that was great. Um, we're really about to get more um info on it as it as it comes uh even in an episode two uh you start to get a little more but still not a lot and i'm excited because we are going to be having um in an interview with a cast member uh who we don't know yet in episode one and we are going to meet her more as yeah, as do. thing a, a little bit we get to know more though sorry get to know more Mm. Um, and I'm just excited uh, to announce that next week. I'm trying to, sorry, I'm trying to tease and I didn't do a very good job. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, and so, uh, no, no, you, that was, I, that was <laughs> I, on me. That was on me. And so I'm going to be announcing sorry, that next sorry. week when we, uh, we got our specific time. And uh, I think after episode two, we're going to be dropping that. Um, but I'm excited to dive more into the history behind um, her family and her culture and how that is going to 
impact her new power set changes. Mo, what do you think of uh, the power coming from, or maybe not just coming from, but being unlocked within her from the Bengal? Well, yeah, exactly. I can't, I we can't get into spoilers to that degree. Um, although I'm saying that I put it in my review and Disney didn't say anything and I sent it to Disney. So, um, I don't, I don't know what's going on here. Um, but I think the power is being tied to her heritage, uh, in, in a very simplistic sense, the power is being tied to her heritage does indicate that there's something historical there. And I know obviously episode two touches on a little bit of the history, the family history, but it also touches on the cultural and um, the national history of Pakistan, because you've got the story about, um, which isn't a spoiler, but you've got the story about partition that gets brought up. Um, and that's a huge, a huge moment, because if I, I've got uh, Indian and Pakistani friends who would talk about it as like when, when I was growing up as well. And that was also something that was very much, um, it is a story that people, that people will tell, like it, it's a historical part of their families. Um, well, like it didn't affect my family because I don't really know what my family was doing in in that time. Um, they might have been in South Africa, they might have been in India, um, but it's very like the stories that you hear and the stories that are being told are very true to the character. And so I think that tying her powers to her historic to a family background makes it a lot more palatable to it makes it a lot a lot more special it makes it feel like she is the person who can be miss marvel rather than it being this entire race of inhumans um that any one of them could be miss marvel it's her that could be miss it's only her that can be miss marvel and i think that that, that the mcu does a really good job of i don't want to say i don't know if there's a word for like destinifying but like making each of its heroes feel like they're the only person that can take up that that mantle at the time that the story is being presented to you um so I, I, and and that's one of the things that i that i know that the mcu does really well it did they they did it for uh i was gonna swear <laughs> they did it for uh, scarlet witch um they she was the only but she is the only person that could do it they did it for Tony Stark. Like anyone could have been Iron Man had they had the money or whatever. He was the only person at the time that needed to get out of that cave. So he made this whole thing. They had good, and, it, and they did it with Carol Danvers as well. Anyone could have been in that blast, but she was in that in in that for a reason because she was trying to help um, Marvel. Yeah. So the the MCU does a really good job of making it feel like these characters are the right person for the mantle and i think maybe in the future there will be another miss marvel i don't imagine that there will be um but maybe in the future there will be but i hope that they keep this um i hope that they keep this very much like they 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 tie her origin very closely i remember a while ago actually and then you can go on garrett but i remember a while ago that the rumor was and i tweeted this out as, as well Today, the rumor was that the Inhumans TV show was going to be like an in-universe ABC show that was making fun about Inhumans. Um, do, do you remember that going around a while ago? No, no but I would have loved that. I would have loved that. <laughs> yeah, and obviously they can't. Obviously they can't do it now because of um, Black Bolt. Uh, yeah, in 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 uh, Multiverse of Madness, but it was going to be like that the Inhumans TV show was like a failed ABC TV show in set within the MC, like that was in the MCU. Like um, playing on a TV then, in the background or somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And awesome. then Inhu and then the real Inhumans of the MCU were like really annoyed about like the poor MC, uh, the poor Inhuman representation. The adaptation was, was not received well, <laughs> ruined their yeah, reputation. Yeah. Like they, they were just like, <laughs> yeah. Like the representation was really bad. So I, I, I think, yeah, that was like a, that was a very early rumor um but yeah so i, I would love that. that that was that would be funny i want to see the mcu make fun of its history a little bit more in more obvious ways um i like want to see more of that, a little bit of that way from hawkeye yeah. oh yeah like, give me more I, of it. I, I wouldn't but that's because but I that's another I, way I, to explain like, that's what yeah. you just asked for that's what you just wanted so I, I know, I know, I know, I know. But I want it to be 
to be in the way that I want it. I'm very selfish, Garrett. No. Extremely. I, I am. I'm, you know, I thought something that I thought was very interesting from uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And I we, t- we covered this a little bit before. for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I know we've got a couple of people. If you still uh, haven't seen it. I know we've got some people who need to wait uh, for Disney Plus. And so uh, hopefully you missed the one. The one no, it, hopefully you missed the one. We didn't warn you in advance. Hopefully you missed the one. But uh, spoilers. Uh, spoilers just for a second. He um, muted the moment he, uh, he mentioned Scarlet Witch. So we are. Bang, Brandon Perfect. is on the ball. For so, this, so, Brandon, you again, so, yeah. real quick. Um, so yes, I thought that it was very interesting in Multiverse of Madness that they specifically let they specifically say, like, Black Black Bolt, leader of the Inhumans, or whatever they like, specifically master of the Terrigen Mist. Yeah, yeah, when they like yeah. they could have easily just not said that line, and like it still would have the moment would have held the exact same weight, but they specifically mentioned in human in there which like leads me to believe that down the line there is there is plans for that eventually to me it was honestly the opposite like that was like the nail in the coffin that's kind of how i how i viewed that one as they open up the multiverse and mention in humans that's the nail in the inhumans coffin that's how you took that i did i really did and you still think that yeah, when his head got blown off, that was me saying, them saying goodbye uh, to him there to me. But anyways, beyond that, we don't want to dive into this for too long. True. Um, back to Ms. Marvel. What did you think about uh, the power set change, Garrett? And I'm in, and specifically, like, what did you think about how it looked? Yeah, so, I mean, I don't really think that I have, like, too many thoughts on this, right? Because I haven't seen as much of it as you guys. And there's, like, brief snippets of it in, at the end of the episode. Um, so I'm not going to really touch on the power change, but I do think it looks incredible. I mean, I think it fits very well, extremely well with the tone of the show and how they're animating everything. And, and, um, I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I honestly love that they gave the little piece in there too, where she's saving, uh, the person's name who I don't remember. That was, uh, kind of her bully. Um, and she reaches out and you see the hand kind of in the same embiggened way. And I really, really just want to hear her say the words embiggened at some point in this show. Um, but who knows? Wait, maybe we'll get it. Maybe we won't. You never know. If, if we don't, I'm not going to complain because there's a lot of time been, down the road. There is. To, there to, is. It doesn't have to. Yeah, exactly. You're right. It doesn't have to be here. It can just be at some point. Yeah. These, now we can. They're setting these characters up for like the next these are our next slate of heroes for like the next generation. Right. So these are going to be heroes for a long time. So there's, there's time for things to change down the line and, and, and things to evolve and grow. And we haven't said it in a while, but trust, trust Feige. We got to have our trust in Feige. Mm-hmm. Feige we trust. Yeah. Trust the process. Let it play out. We're going to dive into some theories and Easter eggs. Now we're going to play some scroll or not a scroll. And I want to start with that because we can kind of dive into some theories from there. Now, I originally thought Bruno was. I thought that could make sense because maybe they're keeping an eye on Kamala. And then I realized after I rewatched that doesn't make sense. Kamala doesn't have any powers at the beginning of this. Um, so uh, that, that, that wouldn't add up. And so Bruno knows a lot about them personally. He knows a lot about their family. Maybe, maybe it's not him. And now, I'm going to chuck some more people out there that we maybe didn't get to meet as intimately as we met Bruno in this episode. The other reason I thought maybe it could be him was because, you know, he doesn't have a lot of family. He seems to be out by himself. He could just be a squirrel chilling, chilling on his own. You know, first things first, Mo, Bruno, scroll or not a scroll? Definitely not a scroll. Definitely not a scroll. How about you, Garrett? 100%. Not a scroll, though I will say that I'd rather have that happen than Moe's theory, even though it's very logical and smart and nice. I don't want that to happen. <laughs> but still, no, no scroll. Amir, scroll or no scroll? Definitely not a scroll. No scroll. Naki, can I please scroll or not a scroll? give all? Oh, it's good. Is that who you think? No, no, okay. no, it's not. Because the person I know you're going to say is in the list. So that's why I want to let you go off on it when we get to it. 
Um, do you, you don't you don't know who I'm gonna say. You I don't think know I know who I'm gonna say. Okay. If, if I'm wrong, then you can you can put me on blast. Okay. Right. Cool. Um. Okay. Who else? I have? Zoe. Scroll or not a scroll? Uh, okay. No scroll. Definitely no. not. Our police officer friend in the post credit nope. scene. Scroll or not a scroll? Nope. I can see that being a scroll. And Carlos nope. has been hyping his scrollness up in the chat. So I, don't know. I think this nope. man is a scroll. And the reason I think he is a scroll is he knew Nick Fury was off world um, in Spider Man No Way Home. And uh, that adds up into this. He's specifically going after powered people. He wants to know more about it. Yes, that could just say something about his position, but that also could say something about they would go after somebody in that position. So I do think that person could be a scroll. If I missed it, Mo, I thought that was going to be your guy. Who's your... Oh, you missed it. You missed it. Oh, thank God. Thank God, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. The guidance counselor? Yes. All right. Very well, interesting. Hit us with a, it. Yeah. Mr. Wilson, I don't have any solid foundation apart from the fact that scrolls are all about double identities and and get and if if you're there going maybe he's not completely completely evil um maybe he's not completely evil but i'm i i feel like he's got like a certain he wants to sort of keep an eye on kamala um scrolls are all about about the double identity thing the double identity ness and he did say that his dad had the same name as him so there's a bit of like an implication there with double identity Hmm. Um, that is a very and, blink and you miss it moment. And I thought that moment also was also feel, hilarious, by the way. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it was. It was. It was great. I was, so so in the UK, the episodes get uploaded at like eight AM. Or eight AM on Wednesday, I'm driving to work, and I was stopped at like I just pulled over, hit the episode to play on Disney Plus, as I was just playing through my car audio, and I just kept on laughing. Like anytime you said anything, he was like. E- We've literally had this conversation for thirty seconds. I know, and she's like, um, looking, she's like staring off at the clock already. That's so funny. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't watching it. I was just, I just had my phone locked and had the audio playing. Like, yeah, that. but you had seen Don't it like worry. six I'm times not... already at that point, so like you knew it was happening. I, yeah. Oh yeah, I knew exactly. What <laughs> you could so. just go off the audio at that point, and it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, so so my and and also I believe I don't believe that the scrolls are going to be entirely evil. Um. I believe that it's going to be because obviously she's going to need, she's going into secret invasion, being on the scroll side. Um, and so having like an antagonistic person also be a scroll is going to set up something really bad. But if Mr. Wilson finds out that she's got powers, he can also say, look, I'm, we're working on something big. Come to space with me, basically, and be on, on Fury's side. So he's going to be that... Mm that police officer that was at the end of one division for Monica and being like, there's someone who wants to meet you off off world and it's going to be fury or someone or something like that. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like the scrolls that we're meeting this, the secret invasion side and the Marvel side of things we're meeting, we're meeting good scrolls to, to ally with them. And there are theories about, yeah. So interesting. So it's like basically, that. yeah. So, so that's my, that's my, my my whole thing, my whole theory on, on Mr. Wilson and why I think he's a scroll, because I feel like he's he's a character, they've given him such an important role in Kamala's life as far as like being a guidance counselor. Um and they've made a character and they've named him after the author of the, the, the comics or the creator of the comics. Right. Um and you you don't give someone that level of importance and you don't give someone that good characterization already without yeah. wanting to do something with them. Carlo um, says he loves that. He says very men in black. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> I don't, going, I don't, going I don't, I don't know if guidance that's, counselor. <laughs> I don't well, I don't know if that's if well, he could not just be a guidance counselor. He could be a kid scroll who like a ch- the child of, of scrolls who were born on Earth. Um would he be like we, it's set in twenty yeah, I guess it's set yeah. in twenty twenty five. Um yeah. and he looked quite young anyway, and, and Miss Marvel was was ninety five. So true. Um so it could be that group of scrolls that came down to a like what 30 years before so um 
Ah, I like that. Very but interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. I like it. The other theory I want to dive into, and Ruben, I didn't prepare you for this, so if you can't get it up, no worries. But uh, I uh, on I tweeted <laughs> it on my Twitter, uh, TJ underscore Zwarich5, and I retweeted it from the Agents of Fandom page at Agents Fandom. And there was another interesting um, tidbit that uh, that was noticed on Twitter that I, and I went on to my uh, Disney Plus and I took some screenshots and posted it on Twitter. In the post credits, we get a trust a bro van. And that, of course, is from uh, that van is from the tracksuit mafia in, uh, in from Hawkeye, where we interviewed Carlos Navarro, who played Enrique, a uh, member of the tracksuit mafia. I, d- I, I tweeted at him today and I was like, bro, you got to you got to tell us about this. And uh, he said he sent me back a gift that says, I know nothing. Um, and so uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. I told him. If did he comment that on the post or did he, did he DM you that? No, he, he responded on a GIF, uh, like the, uh, Chris Farley. I know, I know nothing. Um, and so we'll see, we'll, uh, we'll see what comes of that. I, uh, I told him if he's Andrew Garfielding us, um, then he's going to have to come up back on the pod and explain himself afterwards. But the other thing that was on there is we see in the credit credits, a makeup and hair artist for Ms. Steinfeld. Now, there's been tweets posted out there that this could be an error and it was actually just like a credit error and it was a copy from Hawkeye. Um, yeah, Master Cro- That was sorry, right. I'm just going to cut in here. This That was Brit, Master underscore Crowley, who tweeted that. Um, that it could likely be an error. So just want to credit her for that because exactly she, she did not, um, she was not happy when I tweeted it for this streamer. No, I'm kidding. She was, she was, she was happy. Um, she was fine. I there you go. So yeah, that. shout out to Brit for pointing me. that out because um, that was a great point. This may not be an Easter egg as much as just a mess up on Disney Plus's part. But the part that really makes me want to believe is that trust of bro van that we, uh, that we saw very, very quickly in the credits. We know young Avengers is on the horizon. Could this have been something where it just happened to be the exact same hair and makeup person from Hawkeye, because that's the person working with Ms. Steinfeld for this as well. You think there's any chance in that, or was it the likely scenario that it was just a mess up? What do you think, Garrett? I'd like to believe uh, just that they- to copy and paste. Oh, sorry, you asked Garrett. Sorry, you think you think it's a copy and paste? I'd like to believe that it's that they wouldn't just make that error because that seems like a pretty egregious error to leave out like a lot of people who worked hard on this show. Um, obviously, pretty easy to fix, I would imagine, but. Uh, I guess we'll have to stay tuned on this over the next couple of days and keep our eyes on those credits and see if they change. If, if it's not a mistake, then it's, it's a mistake by like, if it's real and not a copy paste, then it's such a mistake of even like putting it out there, you know, but uh, we shall see. What about you, Mo? And like Britt uh, Brit mentioned mean, it I'm, in the I'm chat there. The chat now, yeah. Yeah, Britt mentioned in the chat. So the other makeup artists uh, credited on that page didn't work on Ms. Marvel and only Hawkeye. Um, and so that's kind of what points to the most likely scenario, it just being a mistake. Um, and I think if my head is definitely telling me, yeah, it's a mistake, but my heart wants to believe that it's a mistake because she's also going to be in this movie, in this show. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, and so my heart is telling me yes my brain is telling me no what other types of um garrett i want to go to you first did any theories or easter eggs you saw pop up in your head that go oh i hope we see this in the in throughout the series i mean not really because a lot of what i had in my mind while watching it was like crap it's like i've, I've tried to avoid spoilers so hard that like and then i had 
your thoughts in my head a little bit like i'm not blaming you or anything but it's just you know i saw yeah, it it was, and I, it was I my bad i forgot i can't you strike it from the jury you know like you could strike it sounds it from a little the jury, bit like you're, it's still in my head it sounds a little bit like you're blaming him like you're blaming him yeah i mean i'm i am blaming him a little bit but i'm, I'm yeah. not he's doing blaming it in, him but he's in not a malicious way about it yeah i'm not doing it in a malicious <laughs> way i'm like you know it is what it is but um yeah oh, i just, feel like just do what i do and call him out on twitter yeah, just create drama. <laughs> whatever it is, what it yeah. is. Yeah. We're yeah, not gonna be special. messy, Mo. We're not gonna be messy. We talked about this. I'm not refer- I'm not referring to any specific drama. Not gonna be messy. <laughs> no, I'm but not yeah. I'm not I'm messy. That's uh it's there's yeah, it's kind of tough to pop new theories up when you're going in uh with a slightly clouded uh clouded lens throughout. I that. also was just like so like mind blown that I was in this moment that we were able to see this story. Like, and I was, I was really very touched. Like I said, like I almost cried during the episode and um, my mind wasn't on theory mode. You know, my mind gets on theory mode when we start discussing, when we start texting and chatting, my mind is rarely ever in theory mode, like during watch. Also, I don't know if you know this about me, but I rarely go back and rewatch. Fair. Very I don't fair. know why. I don't know why. I just don't. That, you're a busy so, guy lately too. I am, like I am a when, really busy guy lately. It's like that's my thing. Is like I'm doing rewatches when I'm doing other things, working from home, and like I'm cleaning, and I and I pop it on. So it's like when I I got my full time uh, at home right now, where uh, this is this is my job. So yeah, it gives me it gives me a bit more uh, rewatch time in there as well. Um, we're gonna have a lot more Ms. Marvel content coming. What's up, Mo? I wanted to say also with as far as like rewatches go, I think Miss Marvel is the most rewatchable of any of the MCU shows ever because you've got so many background details to pick up on. You can pause and and free and, and on that scene where her and Bruno are riding their bikes talking about like a zombie Captain Marvel and stuff like that, pick up little Easter eggs and stuff like that. But I also think, and this is like this is just from a sort of press perspective when you watch something on on disney's screening platform it gives you a number of plays to watch it so i also i kind of see that as a bit of a challenge like uh, can, can i get to it before it expires <laughs> like can i can i rewatch it five times <laughs> and i'm like yeah challenge accepted on that <laughs> that's fair um, that's a great point and what i love about this show too i agree with you there actually in terms of the rewatchability of it and on top of that, it's weird how it's the polar opposite from Moon Knight in terms of the containment. There's MCU mm. Easter eggs left, right, and center, whereas Moon Knight is the mm. polar opposite. But it still feels weirdly contained because of how well the story is written. What do you think, Mo? Well, so, right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Garrett <laughs> and, and TJ. But basically, my thing with Miss Marvel is it is, aside from those first, what, three episodes of One Division, and then episode five and six, seven, maybe, as well. And yeah, episode one to three, five, six, seven. But this, apart from the sitcom episodes of One Division, this is the most episodic MCU show ever. Because each episode, fine, there's an overarching story, but each episode has its own little thing. So you've got episode one, which is the getting the powers episode. You've got episode two, which is figuring out how to use the powers. Episode three, um, we reported that because of the images found on Disney's press site, episode three is the wedding episode, because she's at the wedding in that episode and the file name was 103. So, And then episode four or five, I imagine, is going to be her in Pakistan. Um, and then five or six is going to be like, like those episodes are largely quite discreet and you can see, you can see it within this first episode is that she wanted to go to, to AvengerCon. That was the, the central kind of premise of this episode. She went to AvengerCon and then she had the, that, that, um, that resolution at the end with her mother where it's like, it still continues on, but as far as the central containment of that episode in, in particular, that, that was over and done with. And then next episode is going to be the figuring out how to use a powers episode and it all reaches a climax. And then she has to like, oh my God, she has to figure out more things. And then the wedding episode, which I don't know anything about. But so I think it's done in a very, very um, easy way to dip in and out of different episodes. You can have like, for me, my favorite One Division episode is either the, the Modern Family episode or the... Um, 
that and other. probably the Modern Family episode. Yeah, <laughs> or probably the, the probably just the Modern Family episode if I can't remember the, um, this one, the the one Fair. that I'm thinking of. But but yeah, I'm trying. So and and I look at something like Miss Marvel and I'm like, this is it's the most it's it's the it's the show the MCU show that I feel does the most with its runtime for one, and it's the MCU show that I feel is the most deserving of being a show as opposed to it being a film because you can make a strong argument for a Moon Knight film or a Moon Knight or like a like a duology of Moon Knight films maybe you have like that would tie into this whole idea of Moon Knight and his and his persona being split into you have you release like a series of two films for instance you could you could make an argument for that and explore the character in that way with one division fine you've got the sitcom premise but it sort of gives it up like when it gets to episode four and then it goes to split between between them and Falcon and Winter Soldier, a film over what six episodes. Loki was felt like a TV a TV film over six episodes. Um, Hawkeye felt like a nightmare come to life. Um, and so I think you've got when you've got something like Miss Marvel, it's so refreshing. Like it feels the most deserving of any of the of the MCU shows to be a show. And I think it uses the format, the episodes, really well. Um, Damon Streams, I feel, does not like what I said about Hawkeye. He's a very Damon's, big uh, Kate Bishop fan. Kate so. Bishop is his favorite, uh, M- uh, not MCU hero, Marvel uh, hero. So uh, Damon, uh, Damon, there's no no Hawkeye slander while uh, Damon's around, especially when Kate Bishop's involved. And that's a perfect segue, too, because next week when we're talking more Ms. Marvel, we don't just got some regular guest on. We got the person herself who is the one that uh, reported this info. And so we got Britt Crowley coming on with us and uh, to talk some is Marvel. And uh, I'm going to be prying saying that my heart wants uh, Kate Bishop the whole time, even though my head's telling me it's incorrect. Um, and then we also have Rachel Leishman from the Mary Sue coming on to talk some Obi-Wan Kenobi with us. And uh, next week, uh, we will also be announcing uh, our special Ms. Marvel cast interview that we have coming. Oh, is that not the right last name? I got it wrong. I just went to a Twitter name. Uh, that's funny. Uh, I just I, I saw that on uh, I saw that on Twitter, and I went. It's to too me. late. Just like Bo Rat. Bo it's Rat. A it's, it's a thing it now. It's a thing now. Sorry, Britt. You're gonna have to deal with it. Sorry about Britt. Sorry about that, Britt. That's uh, that's on me. <laughs> um, but either way, look at all this extra runtime you're getting uh, on this episode. Uh, make sure to uh, follow on Twitter as well. And so, uh, yeah, that'll do it for this week's episode. Make sure you follow all the Agents of Fandom socials. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you to all of our Twitch chat uh, people who have been hanging out with us throughout we had a fun one today. We were making fun of each other a little bit, all in good fun. Talked about this amazing show that is Ms. Marvel and the impeccable movie that is Bo Rat. Um, and probably the most poignant moment we've ever had on this podcast, besides maybe you asking me to be a groomsman at your wedding. True. That was the oh, one. Did that happen? That, that did, did happen. happen. It was live. It was pretty awesome. But this moment right oh, here so is v- more special in a different way. Um, so well the bow rap like, moment the bow rap moment <laughs> yeah that that moment definitely that not, okay, not, not, not any not of me. the nice uh heartfelt not things that we almost, all talked about this crying. episode just the jokes <laughs> uh, <laughs> not me almost crying that's fine that's fine I, i'm just gonna um I'm never asking to appear on a podcast again. <laughs> you know what I meant. And don't spin this against us. <laughs> oh. uh, and so no, before fine. we get it's out fine, of here, I will subtweet. <laughs> before we get out of here, Mo, where can the uh where can the people find you? Uh chaotically chilling on Twitter um with no drama because I don't do drama. <laughs> um, at Mo from Streamer and you can follow the site's Twitter at Streamer News, which is S T R E A M R, no E, and the second E because we're not weirdos. Okay. Yeah. Fair and enough. thanks so much again that for was... joining us today. And like we mentioned earlier, <laughs> in terms of uh, no Twitter drama, you know, it's we 
we have we talk about our goals we're not always reaching them right away but we're trying to get them uh, each time you know no, i'm just bugging you i started the show with bugging you i had to end the show with bugging you that's uh that's mm. how uh that's how this friendship rolls um mm. thank you so much to everybody who joined us today we will be back next week with two episodes again that will do it for this week peace peace thank you very much